come to. They crumble Same. in time. And the one thing that one can always put one's finger on and say, well, that should or would remain is human compassion for or, um, a form of humanity. You know, it's uh, a humanistic kind of approach. I yeah. guess. I guess I'm more philosophic than I am religious, but um, okay. at times I feel spiritually bankrupt because of my natural born religion and I seem to have steered so far away from it so one feels always a little guilty that one's... But on the other hand, I still have a, a well of feeling for a Buddhistic nature. My mother veered me away from Buddhism. She went through that when she was young. So you still haven't come to terms with re religion yet. It's something that still you question. No, one goes backwards and forwards all the time, yeah. I feel. Anyway, get back to your it's album alarm. a bit. Sorry, <laughs> I'm really curious about a song called "Glass Spider." I yeah. like the narrative at the beginning. Yeah. Is that a fairy tale that you wrote? That's part of something? Yeah, an I get. Well, it's something in real life. It's become yeah. pivotal for the tour that I'm doing this year, which is um, a particularly theatrical kind of tour. Um, and I wrote it very much as a theatrical piece of music. And the spider image, I don't really know where it comes from, but I did use it an awful lot in my past. Yeah, it I was going to say recur. that. It's like a symbol for you or something. I think it has. Reason? For me, it represents something to do with motherhood. Um, but the aspects of motherhood where a mother will abandon her children, I'm not quite sure. I don't know why. I think in Jungian terms, it means something entirely different. It's a sense of uh, life and a, 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 of strong will. And there's a good quality to it in Jungism. But Creating the web. Yeah, uh, the yeah, yeah, it is spinning a web of life yeah. and, and of fortitude and strength. But for me, it's always meant something else. Um, but it was based on the idea of the black widow spider, because a black widow spider does, in fact, when it's eaten its prey, it lays the skeletons out on the web. Yeah. And I, I just mm -hmm. thought that was such a peculiar yeah. image that I, I kind of sort of expanded on that. I thought, well, if, if the web was in fact in layers like a building and almost like cathedral like and it had sort of little glittery things on top, a kind of an alt. And I just sort of built up from the idea of the Black Widow thing. Right. And as the music is accumulative, I call it glass, it's out of Philip Glass, you know, uh, Glass Spider. Okay. So it's, <laughs> that's sort of what went into it. But the, uh, how it sounds now, how it feels, is something quite different. I quite like it, it's, it's one of my favourite pieces song. on the It came on the out album. right away when I heard it. It's Brilliant Thank song. you. Welcome. I'd like to go back in the past just for a second. You st became famous, the glam rock and the, the Ziggy, that whole period. Mm. One can assume, yeah, that you kind of like, you like to have attention. Is that still apparent now in your life? Oh, Lord. Has it become no, a I think at that age, I think for anybody who goes into rock and roll, when they first start, they want as much attention as they can get. <laughs> and now you want as less as you can get. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it kind of goes, it goes around and around. What comes around, yeah. Um, it, uh, <laughs> What I really wanted to do, I wanted to be, I wanted to be regarded as the guy who brought theatre into rock, very much. That's what I wanted to do in the beginning. My my ambitions have changed uh, considerably since those days. Did you? But um, what put theatre into rock? Uh, I think to a greater or lesser degree, I might have manufactured something which is here to stay. If it, if it was only just red hair and funny shoes, yeah. but it's um, it, it it was an interesting, very exciting period to go through. Because there were a lot of us doing similar kinds of things. Maybe mine was more theatrical. But the whole mm. idea of the revolution against the blue Levi's and the long hair and the kind of, kind of uh, pudding, treacly feeling that was happening at the time. Right. Uh, for bands like myself and uh, Roxy Music and uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex and, yeah. or T-Rex. Yes. That kind of, we had a, there was a little London movement which was not dissimilar, I would imagine, to the same rhythm and blues movement in the 60s when it was the Stones and the Beatles were coming right. out and all that. It was kind of our little thing that happened there. Now the only person who almost arrives at that point is probably Laurie Anderson. Maybe La Laurie Anderson, right? well, yeah, but she comes from somewhere. Kind of, she is so Soho, Greenwich Village, New yeah. York. I mean, it's, very. it's a, a very so Americanized sure. um, well, the concept, bringing concept to. Well, there's been quite a breakthrough in the arts over the last few years with, as I mentioned earlier, Philip Glass and yeah. people like Steve oh, Reich, Laurie, Laurie yeah. Anderson. And David Byrne, to a, 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 yeah. a lesser extent, but David came out of television school and he was completely and absolutely video-oriented right from the beginning. And he knew about media and, and, and worked in a conceptual way. Um, but that seems a singularly American thing, where those art movements have got into rock. Right. Because we had our period in England, uh, Pink Floyd, Keith Richards, you know, John Lennon, Ray Davis, all out of myself, all out of art school. I mean, we all wanted to be painters 
but none of it, well, I exclude a number well, of those gentlemen, because right? some of them are very good indeed, but I personally didn't consider myself a particularly good painter. And so the two things you took to art school were a portfolio and a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and if you had nothing to put in your portfolio, then you learned how to play rock guitar. Okay. So I ended up doing that. All right. This metamorphosis you go through often that you're famous for, is that something intentional or something to, to keep the public guessing? Oh, I think that probably ended around... I must... <laughs> I think that probably ended around 1976, Apparently. in all fairness. <laughs> I don't think... I, well, I don't think I'm becoming... I'm becoming an instrument. Well, the video, I, the last video, you look more a bit... I don't know... A bit more rock and roll. Well, you know, the that's... I, I, coat and when, I, when I started and writing the album, I wanted it to be... Um, I wanted it to, to contain a lot of really strong, high energy. And I didn't think there was any other kind of clothing that I could use for the first video than stereotype rock clothing, which right. is timeless, it's not fashionable, it's just pure rock and roll. That's all it says. It says nothing else. Right. And so it's almost like wearing black. The black is that. It's yeah. the, it, is, it says nothing but what you put on it. You okay. know? And, and uh, that, so that was the, it was the right thing for that particular um, song right. and for the presentation of this particular music. Okay. <laughs> Seeing as the position you're in, you must be very wary of people. What is it that you look for in a person? I'm not wary of people at all. I'm oh, totally vulnerable, oh, but com damn. unbelievably yeah. fallible. Uh, I, I fall for all kinds of wrong people all the time. <laughs> what about Iggy Pop? Is he <laughs> He's the same. Jimmy. He's a real chump. Yeah, I what is both it about of us. That's why you get well, along together, kind of you and Iggy. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <coughs> I guess we're both the wrong people. Um, <laughs> for who, I've, for known, I've, known, I've known Jimmy for, since 1971, yeah. and uh, a, a relationship has, has grown very strong because we, uh, we were always opposite to each other. Um, he, if you're talking intellectual, Jim is far more intellectual than I am. I met him, He's a far yeah. more cerebral person than I am. Um, uh, and, uh, but we don't give the, we give exactly the opposite impression from what we both are. Yeah. Iggy gives one of, of being a tactile, intuitive kind of person, when in fact he's not. In reality, he's far more academic kind of person right. than I am. Whereas I give the impression of being stoic and calculated and all and that. But not. in fact, I just go, what's happening? And I grasp it, you know. But that, and that's why I think we've always had such a good relationship, is that yeah. we are quite opposite to each other. Yeah. The other person very close to you is your son, Joe. He must yeah. be about 16 right now. He's 15 and a half. 15 yeah. and a half, yeah. almost 16. Yeah. With the problems now with, with drugs and heroin, and yeah. I mean, you went through it. Yeah. What kind of advice can you give him if he goes the <sighs> Absolutely same thing? terrifying, but it's had a, something yeah. that we have absolutely no problems about. We've talked about that. Um, and he has absolutely no feelings or need for to be involved or to be drawn into those areas. He okay. fortunately... Uh, finds at the moment a great fulfillment in his life with what he does. He's a very sportive kid. Uh, he's an uh, obsessive skier and plays rugby and all that kind of, much different to myself <laughs> in those terms. Although I am a, an obsessive skier, um, as indeed is Iggy. Yes. Uh, ha ha ha, and his wife. Um, yes. But uh, Joey is, um, is uh, very, very happy with life and he's looking forward to the future and he doesn't have that depressive thing about what can I do and what's it worth Good. and who cares anyway. So I, I feel very fortunate. Well, you must be doing your job. Anyways, no, involved. he's doing his job. He's <laughs> growing up very well. When are you coming to play? Last question. I think I'm coming in June. I'm coming in June. Even I'm with terrorism? June. We're doing at like least Milan and Roma. And I think, okay. we're, I think we're doing somewhere else too. I think we've got to, we're probably doing about three or four cities whilst we're here. Okay. And I'm looking forward to it tremendously. Thank I'm you. I'm looking forward to meeting you again. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. All right. Do you have time for four IDs? Yes, I do. Oh, brilliant. I wrote them down for you. For you, anything. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Don't say that. I'm going to ask you to do further. What an right? asset this young lady is. Okay. I wrote it phonetically, the first one, because it's in Italian. Oh, Lord, right. It's nothing dirty. Don't worry. Io dico J. Io dico J. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh.